You are listening to the Pencil and Paper Podcast Network. I'm Katrina, and I love anime. I'm Steven, and I'm aware of anime. But what if that affection could rub off? Perhaps that excitement in her eyes got me curious. I could offer up some solid anime. I could give them a watch, just to see what all the fuss is about. And maybe, just maybe... I could learn to love anime, too. Welcome to Inspired by a Weeaboo. Welcome back to Inspired by a Weeaboo. My name is Katrina, and with me is my husband, Steven. Hello. We just finished episode five of Full Metal Alchemist. Steven, what did you think? This was an action-packed episode. (laughs) Like, we got to see... A lot of action, all about them still trying to get to the State Department or the State Alchemy, whatever thing. Military headquarters. Military headquarters. (laughs) We catch uh, Ed on the phone with who we are now more, I feel like we're more introduced to, he's a lieutenant colonel. Yes. Uh, uh, No, don't tell me, don't tell me. I kept, I don't know why I keep, uh, uh, it's, 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 it's a Mustang. Yes. Yeah. I remember <laughs> I remembered it was something funny. Uh, so <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Mustang, we're kind of fully introduced to him. He makes him get on this train that they were going to miss and they get on the train and it was all set up. Now, he knew that there were, t- would you call them terrorists? Yeah. I guess they were terrorists. I mean, yeah, I guess they would be considered terrorists. <laughs> so he and they called themselves because I was trying like the E L F, the East was not the Eastern Liberation Front. I remember that, but the something Liberation Front, mm-hmm. maybe Eastern. I don't know. It sounds good. So <laughs> uh, this guy whose name I can't remember with the eye patch, bald. Bald because he, you know, had hair. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to get to the general, and he stuck up the train. And the Ehrlich brothers, with Elric, Elric, Elric <laughs> it just sounds like it's so much easier to say Ehrlich for some reason. I'm sorry, no. I'm trying. Elric, Elric. Elric. <laughs> but the Elric brothers are on the train, and they did touch on something in this episode at the beginning, which I was kind of happy about because. Not to say that everyone has ever looked at Al and been like, oh, that's normal. But they made a point Mm -hmm. to really hone in on it, you know, because they're on a train with a bunch of people and everyone's just kind of staring like, what the fuck? You know, like they're, you know, they're taken aback by it because why is this person in a suit of armor? And it's, you know, a little odd. And I like that they kind of shined a light on it just a little bit that people are, not just like, oh, that's normal. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so you know, they didn't make a big deal or a big fuss about it, but it, it still was like, oh, okay, that's weird. And people were just kind of like, hmm. And then there's that little girl, Mary, which mm-hmm. is she going to come back? Uh, I don't think okay. so. I just, I felt like they were, I mean, it's not like it wouldn't have worked within the context of this particular episode. But, you know, they seem like they were trying to form a little bond with them, calling them by big brothers and whatever when she saw them. Yeah. And he even referred to them <clears> as like, hey, your brothers are going to go take care of this. And it's just a term of endearment to try and keep her calm in the moment of the terrorist attack, if you will. Uh, but like I said, action packed, you know, I mean, guns are blazing, people mm-hmm. are getting shot, people are shooting themselves from uh, ricochet because they're <laughs> too stupid to not shoot a big suit of armor yeah. and i got i got it it's another thing too that i've i've kind of took note with this episode is with al it's it, it's it's so odd hearing that voice come out of such a big piece of machinery <laughs> i know his sweet little angelic voice i love al's voice so much <laughs> like you you think it's he should be either silent or just have this big robotic tone but he doesn't and he's and and the other thing too being the little brother and i know he's what only 14 yes by this point well no 
No, this would be... No, I don't even think he'd be 14 by this point because, yeah, because this was after they left home. So he's still only 11. So, yeah. we're, okay. So, we're. I mean, we're actually getting to see them yeah. grow. Okay, so that's even better. So we'll just say he's still 11 at this point. And what's interesting about it, he's either 10 or 11, and he's, he's already taking charge. So when people are attacking, like even in the last episode, someone came at, uh, Ed and he's just you know right there. Oh yeah, you know he does he for for a kid. I mean he's got the mindset of a child, but he acts with no care of his own self and harm. Yeah, because it's like he's already got it in grain. I don't have to worry. I can protect my brother, and that's what I'm going to do. And he always puts himself out there. He's he's like. He's an action action hero at yeah. this point, you know, just going in full force. And, and like they do explain once you meet their teacher and everything, they do explain because obviously they weren't like Kung Fu masters right, right. <laughs> when they were children. They learned all of that. They trained and everything else. So it's it's one of my favorite episodes when you get to that point, because not only do you get to see them as children and this is after their mother died but you just get to see even more of that brotherly love like they have a freaking bond that gets stretched so thin but never breaks Hmm. i'm assuming a a lot of the other because we really get to meet quite a few not just uh mustang but Mm -hmm. a lot of other people within the state yes Uh, and they are all Except for, like, the general, who I can't remember whether or not he comes back. Mm -hmm. Pretty much every single other person you kind of saw either standing around Mustang or the ones on the train come back. They all become part of Mustang's team. Now, there were only two names that I remember, surprisingly, because I couldn't Mm -hmm. remember the other guy, Bald. But I remember Hawkeye and I remember Hughes. Yes, Hawkeye is the woman. Right. And Hughes was kind of like their tech guy, I guess, since he was on the the comms back. Uh, eh. no? Okay, <laughs> he I mean. he's just another one of those. He doesn't use alchemy; he fights. He uses those little blades. Okay, but he is one of my favorite characters. <laughs> well, he seemed to be uh, taken with Ed and Al, which I, I like. Oh yes, you know, like he was like, okay, these kids are these kids are all right, and I gotta give props to. Ed for his uh, swift thinking with alchemy to, mm-hmm. to flush them out by yeah. <laughs> kind of creating that little water s- system into the car to kind of flush them out, if you will. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was a uh, pretty, pretty clever, you know, because yeah. I mean, they could have done it any other way. They could have been like, ah, just make a spear and bang, bang, bang and, you know, hit and all that stuff. But no, he's he's a thinker. Yeah. You know, even though he got hit by a tree branch that he saw coming a mile away and he could have ducked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was climbing the, the top of the car if you haven't seen the episode. Yeah. But hopefully you've watched these episodes and you're listening to it going, oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. But <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we're convincing you to go dig this up and pay $100 to buy it. <laughs> I did want to talk about something because this episode brought up another memory that I have when Edward creates the little speaker to talk to the bad guys. Mm -hmm. There used to be a video game of full metal alchemist of this full metal alchemist. Mm -hmm. And you could create like the spear and the blade on his arm and all other kinds of stuff like the, the walls and everything else. But you could also create those little speakers to distract enemies. And in the last episode where, you know, we were kind of talking about where or Ed was kind of going off about being called short and Mm -hmm. everything else. And they changed the animation to where he kind of looked like a big headed doll. Yeah. They also make that in the game where you can create like body doubles of Ed huh. and they're these big headed dolls. I fucking loved that game. What I was played that it. I think it was on PlayStation 2, okay, PS2. That would make sense. <laughs> but my mom bought it for me and I absolutely freaking loved it cuz it was one of those where you got to run around and fight 
and doing all the different alchemy and everything else. It was just so much fun. Well, if it ever winds up on PlayStation Plus, I'm going to have to dig it up. Yes. And check it out. Because, I mean, I probably had seen the game, the cover, and all that. Because mm -hmm. I know I've seen the name Full Metal Alchemist at some point prior to you. Yeah. But it was like so many other animes that I just saw. And I was like, oh, okay. And then, you know, move along. Because yeah. I mean, especially if this was on Cartoon Network, whether it was anime or what Adult Swim or mm -hmm. even Toonami, it, which I, I would... saw them. You know, I was aware of them. Trigon, I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that advertisement they did. Now I'm I'm almost positive Sam Elliott did the voiceover because it was his Trigon. You know, and I was like, Ooh, yeah, and it kind of made me want to watch it, but I never did. But. Yeah, I mean, this is, like I said, action-packed. Now, Mustang. Yes. Okay, well, let's talk about him because we really got to meet him. And you mentioned that he is not a bad guy, but he does questionable things. Yes. Now, had you not said that, I would be very suspicious of him at this point because of what he orchestrated to get them into the state alchemy mm -hmm. system thing whatever department that's what we'll call it department of state alchemy that sounds good uh because from the way he spoke he said he got them on that train he knew something was going down whether he knew specifically or not they didn't yeah. specify but he knew something was going down he got them on there he knew that they would get involved so they could show off what they could do in front of the yep. general, and then that would get them the state exam, which Ed stated, I thought we well, I thought we were already okay to do the state exam. It's like, <laughs> are you nuts? No, you're a kid. And so it just felt like this roundabout way. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if you look at it objectively from a different perspective, you can see that he was doing, like, he knew that they would be able to take care of it. He had faith that they would succeed without fail. Mm -hmm. And he knew this would be the only way to get them that exam. So he, while it may have seemed uh, devious from a certain perspective, he did it for their benefit, whether they see it that way or not. And yeah. that's, that's, tr that's the perspective I'm looking at it from based on what you've told me about the character. Yeah. Because it wasn't meant to be, you know, devious in any kind of uh, vicious way. It was just like, this is the only thing I can think of to get them that state exam. Because otherwise I'm going to have to argue my points. But this will kind of circumvent all that and just say, see what they can do. This is pretty awesome. Just for kids. What yeah. do you think, General? And General's like, hell yeah, sign them up. Let them do it. So, plus, he seems like he's a... Uh, no guff kind of guy because he he didn't kill that guy, did he? He just no. burned the shit out. Of no, like he said, his you know the wounds on his flesh aren't as bad as they feel, but it basically remember that pain. Mm -hmm. But he told him flat out he wasn't going to die. You don't get full backstories on every single character, but you do get more of a backstory on Mustang. And specifically, a lot of the people who were in the military, especially during the Istanbul War, mm. which comes back around like like I said, everything's connected. Even Winry's parents dying is connected okay. and it makes them seem like such a throwaway couple. You see them for like one second when they're talking to Ed and Al's mom when they make Winry the doll. Mm. You see them talking and then the next they're dead. The next time you see them is in a flashback when you find out what happened to them, okay. which you know they're shot in the war, but you find out just exactly what happened and everything's connected. <laughs> but I mean, that's good. I mean, that's some uh, deep thinking for your storytelling that you interwoven all these characters together in such a way that everything has a purpose and it's not just, oh, well, that's. That's just a story point for here, and it doesn't really matter, you know? I mean, if you've interwoven all these little things like that, had you not told me that, I wouldn't have thought shit about uh, Winry's parents at yeah. this point, because I was just like, well, 
that happened, I guess. Yeah. And I just thought it was something to kind of, I think it was when they were having that, that moment about their own mother, yeah. you know, and you saw how all that was playing out, but to even put more context into a scene later on, that's pretty, that's pretty good. You know, yeah. I like when, when shows can do that, but yeah, I'm curious about Mustang because he's, he's kind of shown himself. He's, he, I like I said, there's going to be, I know, at least for me, there are moments where I absolutely want to just reach through the freaking screen and strangle him. Mm-hmm. There's moments where he made me almost hate him. But everything he does is for the betterment of not only himself, because he does want to better himself. His goal is to climb the ranks, mm. but it's what his goal is once he can get there is that makes him a good person. Gotcha. Because he has good intentions. He's just going to do whatever in the fuck he can to achieve his ultimate goal. And it doesn't matter who he has to step on to get it. Mm -hmm. And to him, Ed and Al are just another means to obtain what he desires. And that's why originally, you know, when you had asked why they would join the military when people talk, you know, such crap about it. It gave both, it gives Mustang a way to achieve his goals, and it gives Ed and Al a way to achieve their goals. Okay. I guess we'll just see where it goes from here, because, I mean, I'm I'm still intrigued by it. I like what I'm seeing this far, and it's really hard. I have to say this from a, a podcaster perspective. It's really hard to watch this show and then talk about it, because I want to watch it. I know. You, you know? just want to keep going. I just want to watch it, and... <laughs> You know, where some people may be able to just watch and then take notes and then discuss it later. I I feel like it's better to talk about it in the moment because everything is fresh. And then if I feel like we've watched ahead, then I'm going to think my questions are not going to be valid anymore because I'm not going to have those questions. Yeah, I'm already going to have the answers I need. So I'm not going to be asking said questions. So I feel like in the moment, being able to discuss it on the fly after the fact helps put context into it. And you can kind of see our thought processes as we go. Yeah. So if I'm hoping everyone likes the way we, we do these because they are short uh, mm-hmm. and just to the point. But we do, we're, I mean, we're trying to discuss it and break it down for what it is. And you're kind of seeing how I'm processing it. You already know how everything's going to go down. Mm-hmm. So And everyone gets to see how you're. Or listen how you're holding back on everything you want to say. <laughs> um, but, you know, since we pretty much come to the end of this, I'm going to throw out something to our weebs. And it's just something that kind of came to me on the fly. So, you know, as I've said, if you want to help support the show at patreon.com slash pencil paper productions, I will start posting these early on Patreon. If you want to throw in a dollar and you can get these early instead of waiting ahead. So you can just start binging everything you want. And as they they come available, then you can get them early so you don't have to wait on the the podcast feed. That's up to you. You don't have to. You can wait. But if you're just anxious and then if we can get into, you know, if, if we see people are contributing to the show, then maybe we can do bonus episodes. Maybe that's where we can start doing other movies and things like that. And we can put them on the feed while this show is going on. And we've all got other plans for other episodes that we're, we're kind of working on in the background. I don't want to say too much about, but, you know, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But <laughs> I, this is just something I'm kind of brainstorming. So uh, from this point on, you know, I, I may have done it before this and I'll try to, to push it before now. But if you want to catch these episodes early... I'll have them up on the Patreon so you can listen to them early. So if you want to chuck in that buck, that one singular dollar or more, you can do that and get episodes early. And if you don't, then listen to them on your favorite podcasting platform. Tell all your anime fans that they can find it on their favorite podcasting platform. They can find it on youtube.com slash pencil and paper productions and on pencilpaperproductions.com slash inspired dash Weeaboo. Well, it's not Dash Weeaboo. It's Inspired Weeaboo. Excuse me. It's the other one I'm thinking of that I put a dash into. I'm stupid. Anyway, but there you go. There's all the places you can you can listen. 
All right, my little weebs, until next time. This has been a Pencil and Paper Podcast Network production.